This is an exponentials and logarithms question. Give it a go first, see how far you get. If you get stuck on anything, then have a look through my parts to see the hints that I provide. All right, so we're told a research engineer is testing the effectiveness of a braking system of a car when it is driven in wet conditions. The engineer measures and records the braking distance d meters, that's the unit, when the brakes are applied from a speed of v kilometers per hour. Graphs of d against v and log d against log v are plotted, so we see that in figure 5 and figure 6. And the results are shown below with a data point from each graph. Okay, so we're given two data points as well. Um, explain how figure 6 would lead the engineer to believe that the braking distance should be modelled by the formula d is equal to kv to the power of n, with k being 0 0.017. So for part a, the hint for this part, we're looking at this graph here. We want to take logs of both sides of the equation that we have, or this one here, take logs of both sides of that equation, and then think about why then this graph is appropriate to be modelled by that equation. So d is equal to kv to the power of n. I'll take logs of both sides of that equation. Log d is equal to log kv to the power of n. So we need to break down the right-hand side here. We can use the multiplication rule. So the k is multiplied by v to the power of n, and therefore that becomes log k plus log v to the power of n. And then we can use the power law. And actually, I'm going to change the order of this as well. I'm going to bring this over here. So then we end up with n log v. So that's using the power law with this. Bring the power down. Plus log k. And if you look at what we have in that equation and then compare it to the graph, this is y. This is x. So this is in the form of y is equal to m x plus c, where your gradient is n and your y-intercept is c. So then our conclusion could be something like this. So then on to the second part of this same question, part A. We're trying to show that k is roughly equal to 0 0.017. We have to use the stuff from this graph. We're given that coordinate here. So we can use the, the log equation that we have. So log d is equal to n log v plus log k. That's in the form y is equal to mx plus c. That also has, because um, this, this coordinate here, the x and y coordinates are log v and log d respectively. So if we wanted to put those coordinates into one of these equations, we'd have to put it, if we wanted to put it directly in, we'd have to put it into this equation right here, as that one has log d and log v in it already. So then if we put it into that equation, we end up with, so log v is equal to 0, log d is equal to minus 1.77. So 0 times n plus log k, which is the y-intercept, so we could have just straight away set log k equal to minus 1.77. And then we end up with k is equal to 10 to the power of minus 1.77. And if we type that into our calculator, we end up with 0 0.01698 so k is then roughly equal to 0 0.017 to two sig figs. On to part b. So using the information given in figure 5 with k is equal to 0 0.017 find a complete equation for the model giving the value of n to three significant figures. Okay so all right, so we're using the fact that k is equal to 0 0.017. We want to find a complete equation for the model. So then we want to, if we know what, if we know that our equation is in the form d is equal to kv to the power of n, we want to work out what n is. We have what k is already. So the hint for this part would be to use this coordinate along with this information to then work out what n is and then to work out what our final equation would be. So let's put those things in. So we know that v is equal to 30 and d is equal to 20. So 20 is equal to 0 0.017. v is equal to 30 to the power of n. And now we're going to solve this for n. So we get 30 to the power of n 
is equal to 20 all over 0 0.017. And then we want to do log to the base 30 of both sides to work out what n is. So n is equal to log to the base 30 of 20 over 0 0.017. And that gives us n to be 2.079 or to three sig figs, 2.08. So then our answer for our complete equation will then be D is equal to K, which we already had from earlier, 0 0.017, times our variable V to the power of our constant N, which we just worked out to be 2.08. So one, two, part C. So we have a speed that Sean is driving his car at, so 60 kilometers per hour. We know that it takes 0 0.8 seconds to react before he applies the brakes. So then this will lead us to a thinking distance. We know the total distance is 100 meters. Uh, so this whole thing is 100 meters and that's split into two parts. We have a, a thinking distance and then we have a braking distance. And the two things added together will make the overall stopping distance. We're trying to see if the overall distance is less than 100 meters or not. So then you want to think about how long does it take him to think? So how far does he travel when he is thinking or reacting? And how far will he travel whilst he's actually braking? And see if the two things are less than 100 meters. Okay, so let's start with the thinking distance. That's probably the easy thing to start with. Um, we can just use speed is equal to distance over time. So I'll say speed is distance over time. Uh, the distance will then be the speed times time. We know that the speed is 60 kilometers per hour. We want to convert that to meters per second to times it by seconds, which is the unit for time, uh, to then get a distance in meters. So if the speed is 60 kilometers per hour, how we can convert this to uh, meters per second is to break down the units. So this is the same thing as 60 kilometers divided by one hour um, as it's per hour, so that goes to the bottom. And then we can break down those two things. So this then becomes 60 times a kilometer in meters is a thousand meters and an hour in seconds is 3,600 seconds. So this then becomes 16.67 meters per second, or as a fraction, let's keep that as 50 over three for our future calculations. And then we wanna multiply that speed by the time. So we do speed times time, which is the distance, will then be 50 over 3 multiplied by the time, which is 0 0.8. And that then gives us 13.3 recurring, which as a fraction is 40 over 3 meters. OK, so that is the thinking distance. Then for the braking distance, the braking distance we can work out by just putting this into the equation. So distance would be 0 0.017. The speed, which remember the speed is meant to be in kilometers per hour, so we don't need to use the converted value. The speed will be uh, 60, and then to the power of, if we scroll up to the equation, that was 2.08. And that gives us a, a braking distance of 84.919. So add the two distances up, 84.919 plus 13.3 recurring, and we end up with 98.3 meters. And that's less than 100 meters, therefore he will stop in time.